I don't know how to tell you guys this, but Magneto was right. And I mean, if you thought it was Beast or Mystique or even Multiple Man, you were wrong. Magneto was the right answer. Magneto was right. And we have Magneto here as a hero in Marvel Champions. And as someone who goes by the name Villain Theory, having a villain as a hero here is a pretty exciting. So I am very excited for Magneto, even if I secretly, non-secretly, hoped it would be Beast. So let's talk about Magneto and what makes him interesting, which might be harder than you think. Because if we take a quick glance at him here, he's got two fort, two attack, two defense, three recovery, 10 hit points, five hand size, six hand size alter ego. Which is to say, if I went to an X-Men ice cream stand and I asked for two scoops of Magneto, they're just going to give me two scoops of vanilla. And that was kind of my impression after having looked at all of Magneto's article, all the cards they revealed. Because while there's some interesting ideas, I didn't see them go anywhere too special but now this is a deep dive i've looked a lot deeper into it so we're going to see if that holds up throughout that video and if that's really going to be the case when he's released so before we look at his abilities on his identity card let's just have a quick roundup of what we've actually had revealed to give you some idea of what we're working with here and we've not seen much so he doesn't have a signature ally his first card which is basically always a signature ally is instead his alter ego support which we'll get to and we're missing a lot here. With Jubilee, who was pretty recently revealed, we were only missing one card. Nightcrawler, I don't exactly remember, I think it was maybe two or three. But with Magneto, we're missing most of his cards here. So he has this older ego support that I mentioned, Asteroid M. He's got two upgrades, then a bunch of missing stuff, then two events, which there are multiple copies of each. We don't 100% know what's happening with Metal Shards because we can't see kind of onwards by counting the numbers here. But there's almost certainly at least two of them, maybe three, I'm guessing two. So we have a lot of gaps here. So we're working off a lot of assumptions or we're not assuming anything, but then we don't have much to go on. So take this video with a pinch of salt and let's see how we go. So we have Magneto, whose hero ability is Magnetic Pull. And I should say Magneto has the X-Men trait and on his other side, you know, as Eric, he has the mutant trait, pretty standard stuff. So Magneto has Magnetic Pull. Action, discard cards from the top of your deck until a Magnetic card is discarded. Add that card to your hand. Now, this is really cool. This is, as I said in the reaction video I did with Nelson, this is basically his sixth card in hero form. So you're always going to have six cards available until you run out of Magnetic cards, which might not happen at all. You might, in fact, use this, get, you know, your last Magnetic card, then deck out immediately. So there's a chance that this never runs out on its own. So this is really, really good. Obviously we need to look at the magnetic cards, but this is kind of a parody is the wrong word, but it's kind of the hero interpretation of what the villain does on their main scheme where, you know, you add counters and when you have enough, you discard until you find a magnetic card to reveal. So I do like the kind of way they mirror each other. And this is intentional. I'm glad I waited to make this because I watched the fantasy flight games live stream where they showcase Jubilee and Iceman against the four horsemen. And Caleb talked a little bit at the end. He talked about how he designed Magneto and he said he started with the villain design that he had already, you know, done and finished. And he basically tried to convert that directly into the hero, which is really interesting. And we'll see that throughout this deep dive. So what can we do if we're discarding cards from the top of our deck every time? Well, Digging Deep and White Fox are super, super obvious, I think. Uh, maybe not for everyone, but, you know, first thing I went to as a deck builder is I'm discarding a lot. Let's throw that in there. So I would say all three copies of Digging Deep and obviously the only copy of White Fox most people will have. Uh, this is just auto-include. This goes in almost all of Magneto's decks. Some of Magneto's decks might be focused more on X-Men, you know, tribal stuff, or maybe I don't want this posse ally. But in my experience, uh, just the ability to get an ally for basically nothing, even if it's only in the early game before your ally slots are more taken up and stuff, super worth it really really powerful so it's going to be hard to convince me not to put white fox in there and i think digging deep is kind of a no-brainer so that's pretty good now after this i found it a little bit more difficult so other cards that benefit from discarding one is lockjaw but i don't really think he'll need or want lockjaw to be honest with you but i thought it was worth mentioning the other is make the call so if you're discarding a lot, a few of your allies are inevitably going to be missed from your hand. They're going to end up in the discard pile. So make the call is a going to be able to save those allies if you wanted to play them. 
but make the call is also going to have more targets than usual because you know you're going to start to fill up that discard pile quicker than most characters now you might discard make the call but you know you can't win them all there's got to be some downside and yeah but here's also the thing though make the call is good on every hero so yeah maybe it's got some extra stuff going on with magneto but it's not too much more special than having on most characters but yeah i thought worth a mention then we have magneto's armor which is of course based off magneto's armor <laughs> and you'll see this as we go on um it has the same traits but it works very differently but i do like how they've kind of you know mirrored it slightly they've ignored the whole stun part of it here cannot be stunned and normally this takes three different resources to get rid of it and as a hero card the three different resources interact with what bonuses it gives Normally, as a piece of armor, uh, you know, it's an encounter card, it gives plus one attack. It's kind of weird when you think about it. I don't know why the armor doesn't, you know. <laughs> I guess being unable to be stunned does help him, you know, take less, you know, hits. But yeah, where that his armor makes him deal more damage. But with Magneto's armor as a player card, it does everything. So when you use your magnetic pull ability, which is where you discard to find a magnetic card, depending on what you discard, you will get different benefits. If it's a mental, you get plus one four, physical, plus one attack, energy, plus one defense. And what it says in the article, which Min and missed in our initial look, because we just kind of skimmed through some of the writing, all of his cards have the magnetic trait, which means you have 15 chances in your presumably 40 card uh, player deck. So when you discard to find a magnetic card, in theory, you won't have far to go, which means you might not trigger many of these. You're guaranteed to trigger one, I think, because all of Magneto's, you know, magnetic cards are going to have our resource icon on there. I don't believe any are wild that we've seen so far. If they are, they wouldn't count. But otherwise, these cards, you know, the, any resource icon will help to boost your stats. It only happens once. So if you see two mental resources, it's still only plus one falling. But potentially you can get plus one to all your stats. If not, you can kind of carefully choose what you're going to use. So if you get the plus one to falling, but not to attack, yeah, you're probably more inclined to use your basic forwarding of that turn and so on and so forth. It is interesting that it lasts into the uh, villain phase because it lasts for the round. So you can actually get a pretty solid defense from this and you'll know that in advance as well. In fact, you'll probably use magnetic pull as the first thing you do on most turns. And that means you're going to be able to know kind of what you're working with stat wise for the villain phase and the hero phase you're currently in. So pretty interesting card. So it's a two cost upgrade, which is about what we'd expect for a uh, stat boost, like combat training or so on in the aspects or you know, heroic intuition. Uh, but this can kind of be multiple and probably will be multiple most of the time. So I kind of think it's worth its cost, but because it's not reliable what symbol you get, it loses a little bit of value, but you can obviously build into certain resource icons, you know, a resource type in your deck if you really care about one thing. So you have some kind of influence. But for me, this is probably something I play if it's convenient. And I think it's a good play, but it's not something I'm bending over backwards for. If I need to keep up tempo or if I've got, you know, just better stuff in general, I'm not going to worry too much about the armor is my initial impression. Now, if he does have extra ways to ready beyond Utopia, you know, as all X-Men have that, it's the support that when you play an ally, you get to ready an X-Men character, which he is. Uh, if he has something more than that to ready, this could become a much higher priority. Otherwise, good, but not essential. Now, what combos with this armor card? Well, because it boosts your stats, any kind of readying is probably going to be pretty useful. So I won't bother to list out just all the readying in the game. But, you know, we've got everything from Utopia, which I just talked about, to, you know, what doesn't kill me in protection and justice served in justice and so on and so forth. Now, what's kind of interesting is if you can boost multiple stats, potentially all of your stats, we have Go All Out and Push Ahead, which are the leadership events, which you exhaust your character, then you add all their stats together and it either becomes damage or forwarding. Now, because you could have done a basic attack or basic forwarding, you kind of need to subtract your, you know, forwarding or attack stat, you know, respectively, um, to figure out the actual benefit you're getting from those cards. And they're not maybe known as the most competitive cards in the game, now, it's not a competitive game. They are really fun. So I think there will be fun builds here. But it's not something I see as a go-to build for Magneto, but worth talking about. We also have cards like Domino and Global Logistics, which let you mess with the top of your deck. So Domino can swap a card from your hand with the card on top of your deck. So you can set up something for Magneto's armor to definitely trigger if you really want one stat boost. Is that worth it? I don't think so. 
but Domino is also really good with digging deep and white fox. If Domino's on the board and you accidentally get one of those into your hand, you can put that back on top of your deck, then immediately do something to discard it. In Magneto's case, it's going to be using his magnetic pull ability on his hero card and then guaranteed getting that value, which is very, very good. So Domino will be worth it for that. And Magneto's armor might just happen to benefit from it on certain turns where it's important. Global Logistics, <sighs> there's so much value using this on the encounter deck, particularly in solo and two player. So I don't see you using this much to organize the top of your deck just for stat boosts, but it's interesting interaction that I wanted to highlight. And if you think I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel, you know, these aren't really cohesive builds. It's just the odd card that maybe has some kind of weird interaction. You would be correct. It's pretty hard to find something really interesting with these cards so far. Obviously, we're just really getting into it. So the next card is his helmet, which is, you know, a surprise based on the helmet encounter card. This does slightly reflect how Magneto cannot be confused. It's not quite that powerful as a hero card. You know, it's kind of like watching a TV show. If the bad guy joins up with the heroes for any reason, they instantly become a lot weaker. You know, they were previously challenging the heroes all by themselves. Now they're basically weaker than one of the heroes, you know, individually. <laughs> But yeah, it goes from unable to be confused entirely to just steady. But steady does work against stun. Against certain scenarios, let's say the Infinity Gauntlet, you know, Magneto's helmet's going to be really, really good there. Otherwise, it is in a card that is a, you know, it's a resource generator. Exhaust it, generate a wild resource for a magnetic card, which are all of his signature cards again. So this is pretty good. Now, Nelson thought this was expensive for a resource generator. I think it is a bit as well, but steady can be really powerful. It really does depend on the scenario, though. You can sometimes go through an entire scenario, not get a single status card on you. It's fine. Other times, this is going to get you a lot of value by effectively meaning the villain needs to you know, stun you twice, confuse you twice. So I think the free cost is justified, but it definitely puts me off slightly. But there are so many magnetic cards and, you know, you can discard to find one. It's basically never missing. So it is good. I do think it has a slightly unfavorable comparison to Power Belt, from Iceman, he has a two cost upgrade, which gives him a really good bonus and then generates a wild resource for his special traded cards. And we can kind of see these are very, very similar, but Power Belt comes out better from this. I think I'd rather get the plus three hit points. I think I'd rather pay two than three cost. Uh, the magnetic cards are more consistent into hand, but I don't know if the difference is big enough here. So I'm curious what you guys think. Obviously, I still think Magneto's Helmet is a good card but I'm probably putting it in the same category as his armor. Not absolutely essential to play it, although it's really good, because we have other good resource generators on the table for Magneto as well, which we'll look into shortly. So what does the helmet combo with? Well, it combos with his other magnetic cards, really. That's basically the only thing it combos with. Said he doesn't do anything else for us. And again, we'll see that these cards are sort of versions of his encounter cards. So let's start with Electromagnetic Blast. Electromagnetic Blast is based on the encounter card of the same name. When revealed, exhaust all the upgrades and supports. They've mirrored this by making the hero event get rid of attachments on the villain. So it doesn't exhaust them because obviously that wouldn't do anything. It just gets rid of them entirely. I kind of feel like that idea might have thematically fitted a card which, you know, magnetically rips off the attachments rather than, you know, Electromagnetic Blast. Typically, especially in like, you know, quote unquote fantasy or, you know, uh, you know sci-fi, Sometimes it's a temporary disabling of, you know, technology and it doesn't necessarily make sense to use an electromagnetic blast on, I don't know, a combat knife or something in my opinion, and it just doesn't work anymore. But you know, it is what it is. It's really cool to have that. The way this card works is actually his forwarding card. I just think the, you know, removing attachments is much cooler and more interesting, uh, but it's a forwarding card. Two cost removes free threat. So it's, you know, free effective resources for free threat removal. This is exactly the same as Iceman's, you know, and we're going to see some of these designs reflected a bit here. I could even have compared his armor, which is the upgrade, which, you know, once you use your magnetic pill ability, see what resources you discarded as part of that and, you know, get a stat boost. Kind of reminds me of Magic's stat boosting upgrades that care about the resource type and also, you know, Jubilee counting different types of resources for different, you know, uh, to get more out of her stuff. So interesting ideas that seem to be a theme here in this wave. Now, whether that's repetitive and, or, you know, that's not creative, they're just reusing the same stuff, or whether that's, you know, it's just a theme of design as part of this, you know, wave of X-Men, I think that's up to you guys to decide how you feel about it. So far, I like all these cards. I'm fine with it. If it was something different and amazing, great, but I am kind of enjoying this just fine. So you've got your free effective resources for free threat removal. If it removes the last threat from the scheme, so it's kind of like clear the area in that regard, 
you get to discard the attachment with the text hero action or hero response. Very, very good. Basically, it's like having a couple of copies of Sunfire in your deck. But if there aren't any attachments, you know, if there's no attachments on the villain at all, you are getting kind of bad value here. It's still playable, especially with all the discounts. It has the magnetic trait, superpower trait, fort trait. Those are all very relevant. Um, but it has, you know, it has its downsides as well as upsides. But I do think it's cool overall. Now, this obviously to me is going to combo with Tender Tide because that really wants you to remove the last threat. So does Electromagnetic Blast. They just go together well. One way or another, it's going to provide you some targets because if you're playing solo, the main scheme might only have, you know, one or two threat on it. That's going to be even more of a waste, you know, with Electromagnetic Blast. But one way or another, it can bring in maybe a good target to fort, remove all the threat from, and maybe even find you Tender Tide for your troubles. Obviously, this is a classic combo. And this is a combo of cards, you know, Tender Tide one way or another, that is good on any hero which is why I find it quite hard so far to suggest any real meaningful builds that Magneto will like. But here we are, uh, still pretty interesting, still really cool to have Magneto in the game, but I'm sort of struggling, as you can see, to find something really, really interesting. Also, a quick shout out, we have player side schemes as well, which a lot of them, especially the best ones, you know, arguably, have free threat on them when they come in in solo play, which makes Electromagnetic Blast perfectly poised to take them out. So that is actually really, really good and useful. Then we have Metal Shards, which is just like the encounter card, Metal Shards. So it's a free cost event, which deals damage just like Metal Shards does, but that's where the similarity ends because the Metal Shards encounter card, they're tiny little shards. With the Metal Shards, you know, hero event, these are huge blades that are impaling these kind of advanced sentinels in the art, which is, you know, I guess why it's dealing more damage here, but hero action deals seven damage to an enemy. If it defeats the enemy, gain a tough status card. This is like Hard Knocks, which we can see on the other side here, but it does free extra damage. But the thing is, Hard Knocks is a good card. It's very playable. Uh, you know, it's better in multiplayer when there are more minions to, you know, have the opportunity to get the bonus from. But nonetheless, if you waste a bunch of damage from Metal Shards because the minion doesn't have enough health, it's still fine because you're still defeating that minion and you're getting a tough status card. The tough status card is very efficient, which means Metal Shards can afford to be less, you know, it can afford to waste a couple of damage, let's say that. But if you just want to hit the villain and, you know, reduce their health, you know, try and push them toward defeat so you can win the game, seven damage for free cost is absolutely fine. Is it ideal? Is it swinging web kick? Absolutely not. But I think for the flexibility to, you know, take out minions and get a tough to provide damage and potentially defense, I think it's absolutely worth it. It's got that magnetic trait, so it's going to be good with his helmet. So in general, I really, really like this card. I think this is my favorite of the two events, although I do love getting rid of attachments. This is just more consistent and can do multiple things. So I like this. Now, what does this combo with? Well, pretty much nothing, you know? Okay, I could play aggressive energy and now it's doing eight damage, um, but you know, that's not super relevant. That goes for like every attack event in the game. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to talk about some of the traits here. So we have Death Focus and X Gene, and thank goodness we have a reprint of Death Focus finally. I rebuild my decks all the time so it's not a huge issue for me i'm always moving these cards around but i know a lot of people are going to be very happy here but this is a superpower he apparently has a lot of superpowers we've seen four so far two copies of his two events but the article says there is a lot so presumably at least two more which means death focus can be very very good and x gene you know it's going to follow suit and it's going to work for all these events that he wants to be paid for because you know they're fairly expensive everything we've seen is really two or three cost so his kit is going to be quite inflexible compared to most characters, which is also kind of reminiscent of Iceman. So let's talk about his alter ego and his alter ego support, since I've not really touched on that yet. Now, the free recovery, I don't really care about. You know, it's all very standard stuff here, but he has his survivor response. After you change to this form, shuffle the top three cards of your discard pile into your deck. This is really interesting. We'll come back to this in a minute, but it does give you some interesting control about putting certain things into your deck. You know, you might wait until you've played a certain event, then flip down to put it back in or what you know a certain ally has been defeated flip down put that back in it has some kind of anti-synergy with his hero ability magnetic pull because if you've got some good stuff in your discard pile but you want to get your extra card from your hero ability before you flip down you can undoubtedly discarding putting a over you know three or four cards even on top of your discard pile and now when you flip down you're just going to be putting those cards back in instead though you could obviously you know potentially play something else from your hand after that to set that up but if there's something there, like an ally you blocked with in the villain phase, it becomes a little bit trickier to get full value from both abilities. But, you know, it's an interesting puzzle. I like that there's some kind of skill and thought to that decision. 
I really enjoy that kind of thing. So that's very interesting. And, you know, he's sipping what appears to be a cup of tea here. I don't know. Uh, as a British person, I identify with this very strongly. Asteroid M is a two cost support, has a location trait and obviously the magnetic trait. Alter your action, exhaust or asteroid M, shuffle the topmost magnetic card in your discard pile into your deck and heal one damage from your identity. So if you do happen to find a lot of your magnetic cards early, just can shuffle them back in and then your hero ability is firing a bit more reliably on the next time you go down to hero form to use it. It's also kind of interesting to put, let's say I really need to remove this attachment, put that into my deck then flip to hero form, then use magnetic pull, then try to find it. You know, that'd be the electrostatic blast card we just looked at. So it has some interesting uses like that. And healing one damage from your identity is obviously, you know, that's fine. We all like some healing. But to me, this is slightly overpriced. I mean, when you look at, you know, what Domino gets for one cost, and then we look at this, this doesn't get you any immediate value. So I'm playing a two cost support, free effective resources, and, you know, I shuffle something into my deck. And I get one healing. It's very low impact. So much like his armor and helmet. Yeah, if I don't have anything better to do, I'll play it. You know, this this is probably, you know, that's not fair to those cards. Those cards I prioritize a bit more, I think. For me, this is nice to have, but absolutely far from essential. Probably gonna be a low priority on my turn. So yeah, slightly ashamed about it, but hey, maybe I'm wrong and it's still playable. And I'm sure it will get some good uses and probably some very clutch, you know, really great uses when you get that one specific event because of it that you really, really needed. So something that creates moments like that is inherently really fun and cool. Just, I think it should have been a one cost for what it does personally. So let's go back to the older ego card and the ability here, the survivor response reminds me a lot of Wasp's ability to shuffle cards back in, but also Iceman's ability to shuffle ice cards back in. And it's different to both of them, but it is interesting in how it kind of slightly resembles them because you kind of get to choose how you use this. If you have magnetic card or maybe even two of them on top of your deck, then you swap to Alter Ego, you'll be a little bit more like Iceman, putting in those magnetic cards to make your magnetic stuff more consistent. And you know, you get to sort of choose which kind of hero events you kind of need for the next turn or two. Whereas you can also use it like Wasps. You can make sure, you know, your top couple of cards are maybe some really high value cards that you'd like to play a second time within one deck pass, which is a very, very notable benefit. Uh, you can time it so that you go to Ultra Ego when those are in the right place. And now you've got those really strong cards back in your deck. I mean, you know, maybe Professor X, so you can keep going Ultra Ego, something like that. You know, there's some really strong options. Nick Fury jumps out, uh, resource cards, you know, and maybe some of his unrevealed cards, you know, which could be very, very powerful. So I think that's pretty interesting and tactical. So I kind of like this ability again, as I first mentioned, if you are going Ultra Ego a lot to try and make use of this and maybe his Ultra Ego support. Confuse obviously makes sense, but you know, this goes for any character of any Ultra Ego ability and you know, support. So nothing super special here. I'm really trying to scrape something together to recommend because normally, you know, I'll go for a little bit and then, you know, show you all these different builds and the aspects or, you know, but I still haven't really found anything here, guys. And here's the problem. I kind of been through basically everything now that he has and nothing is off the table, which is to say, you know, maybe he's a little bit like Venom or Captain America. You can kind of build him how you want. You want to build him into his basic stats where he can kind of get a kind of reliable bonus to them. You can do that. Want to build him into events. Sure, once he's paid for a magnetic card with, you know, his other stuff, whatever else you want to do, you could put that into events. We could put it into an ally and do an ally based build. He's going to work for most builds, but they're not particularly going to shine on him or have any, in my opinion, you know, super special interaction that I can currently see. So a little bit of a downer there, maybe, but there is hope at the end of the tunnel, as it were. So yeah, I don't know. Make the call is good, but everyone can do that. Go all out. It's interesting, but it's probably still not what he wants to go for. It's expensive. It's not reliable that he gets a stat boost. And really, I'm left thinking at the moment, but from what I see, he's probably just going to be running, you know, the typical powerful X-Men builds. Lots of X-Men allies, uncanny X-Men in leadership. Maybe we run some of the, you know, training upgrades in aggression or justice, which are low cost, which are good to kind of fit in with his high cost curve that we're seeing. But yeah, what the line at the end of the tunnel is, is that we haven't seen many of his cards yet, which is to say there could be a bunch of interesting upgrades, which completely flip things on their head. His other events could be, you know, really interactive and shake things up as well. And maybe they won't. And you know, based on what I've seen so far, I'm not expecting a miracle. I get the impression that 
Magneto is going to be such a popular character, and let's face it, we're all getting him pretty early on, I think, as quick as we can. At least I feel that way. Um, maybe they wanted him to be new player friendly. Nothing overly complicated. Nothing that's going to make deck building difficult. They just wanted a kind of, you know, fairly straightforward powerhouse. And that's kind of fine, I think. Would I have liked something a bit more? Yes. But again, this is just theoretical. You know, it's a, uh, a villain, a hero theory, as it were. We have so many cards, we don't know what they are yet. Now, obviously, some of these question marks, sort of gaps you can see here, are going to be copies of, you know, the card above them. So then there's not going to be, you know, eight new cards, but we're getting definitely a few here. So because all his cards are based on villain cards that he has as the villain Magneto, we can maybe guess what some of them are going to be. Since we have his helmet and his armor, the other kind of attachment he's missing is Magnetic Bubble. I could see this being a defense event instead of uh, an upgrade, but it could also be an upgrade kind of like Phoenix's Telekinetic Shield. So you play down, box a certain amount of damage, then goes away. Probably going to give him Retaliate like Magnetic the Bubble does as well. Or at least, you know, ping one damage back, something like that. You know, like the encounter card Magnetic Bubble. Wrapped in Metal, you know, prevents an identity from readying up. Maybe it can be a bit like pin down or... Phoenix is, uh, what is it called? Uh, you know, uh, she's got like a mental paralysis kind of card that locks down a minion so it can't activate. I wonder if he might have something like that. Now, Magneto's cape is not an encounter card, but I wonder if he might have it or something equivalent. It's strange to me, Magneto does not have the aerial trait. I think that's kind of a baseline thing his abilities can do. I don't know. I think he's got to be able to get aerial. If not, it's kind of an Adam Warlock level of oversight, you know, because he can't get aerial either for some reason. Uh, so I'm expecting something to give him aerial. And a lot of capes ready people up as well in Marvel Champions, like Storm's cape, Adam Warlock's cape, as we're talking about it now. Uh, so if Magneto had something to ready him up, that would make his armor card giving him those better stats even better and let you build more into those readying kind of builds. So we'll see. Magnetic Missile is another one I thought might be interesting. Maybe you need to have a magnetic card in hand and then, you know, you play the event to discard that card from your hand to, you know, kind of send it out as a missile to hit an enemy. I thought that could be a fun, different attack. Maybe he has a one copy of it, kind of, you know, his big attack, a bit like Jubilee's Grand Finale, which is a newly kind of revealed card. If you've not seen it, check out my previous video where I look at some of the new stuff shown off in the live stream or something like Nightcrawler's uh, Teleport Drop card, which uh, is pretty fun as well. Master of Magnetism is Magneto's card where he activates. So I think as a player card, the natural transition would be it readies you up. So maybe that's another way he could get readying. I don't know. Uh, but ready you up and maybe a bonus to your next basic attack because Master of Magnetism makes Magneto the villain activate and get an extra boost card. That just seems like an easy transition to me that again would combo with his armor. Will that happen? I don't know. The other cards really that I'm missing here are the side schemes. And I don't think Magneto's going to have a player side scheme, but... Maybe they reinterpreted those side schemes into, you know, events or support, something like that. So we'll see. But yeah, there's a lot of potential here still. Things could get more interesting. Things could change up. There'd be new synergies between these cards and the new ones potentially here. So I am hopeful. And I still think Magneto is going to be really, really fun. But it's definitely hard to find any kind of build I want to suggest to you guys. So this video might end up being slightly shorter. Knowing me, though, it's probably still going to be really long. But yeah. Hopefully that was interesting in terms of kind of, you know, what could be coming up for him. And this is where I move on to predict things for Magneto. And here's the thing. Normally when I make a prediction, it's looking at what we've seen so far and then trying to predict how good they'll be based on that. But since we've seen so little of Magneto's kit here, it really is a prediction. I'm guessing a lot here. Don't take this with a pinch of salt. Take it with like the whole salt shaker, a whole bucket of salt, oh, you know, whatever you want here. Uh, there's some guesswork going on here, but what I see so far is a really strong basis. So I've gone for four damage. I think his attack card is good. It's not mind blowing, but he can shuffle it back in potentially. He's going to find it more often. He's going to work through his deck faster because he discards cards with magnetic pull. I think his damage is going to be solid. I really do expect at least two of his other events, at least one worst case, to inflict damage. So that's a prediction. Fording, three stars. I mean, he's got two fording. It can get up to three with his armor. He's got two kind of decent, you know, fording events. Overpriced if there's no attachment, but he can, you know, pay for them in convenient ways. Survivability, I've put at four stars. You know, he can get free defense potentially, but maybe more importantly than that, his damage card so far gives him tough. I think that's going to add up. I think that's going to be very, very useful. 
And again, I really, really, really would be surprised if he did not have magnetic bubble, whether a defense event or kind of a, you know, defensive attachment upgrade. Economy, I put it four stars. Not only do all these, you know, things like X gene and death focus work for him really, really well. Uh, he has that ability, magnetic pull, to just get that sick card. And because he's discarding, digging deep is on the table. I think he's going to be able to pay for things pretty well. Now, we'll see how this works in practice. I do think with so many magnetic cards, you are actually going to, you know, not discard too many cards between each one you find. So you're not going to get digging deep all the time, but it is definitely going to happen. It's kind of an interesting thing here. If you use his alter ego support to put magnetic cards back in, you're going to discard less cards on average until you find a magnetic card, which means you might get less stat boosts or not the stat boosts you want. And, you know, you're going to be finding less digging deeps or, you know, getting white fox, you know, discarded as well, potentially. Uh, it's probably only a small change in the numbers, but it is something interesting to consider if something like that is maybe vital to your game plan, what you need to do. So, yeah, kind of interesting there. Control, I put it too. Uh, he might have something that wraps people in metal. I don't know. Maybe his other card stuns, you know, if he gets another attack. I don't know. That's the prediction. Right now, it's more looking like one star, but I would be surprised if he didn't have just something a little bit extra. Speed of setup is four stars. Again, magnetic pull, giving him more money early on. That's helpful to set up, but it's also going to find your upgrades and things earlier on as well. So I think he'll set up a little bit faster than average, which would be, you know, three stars. Reliability, I put it four stars. So his armor card, which is, you know, get stats based on what resource icons you've discarded as part of magnetic pull. That is not reliable. Though I do think it's fairly safe to get at least something good from it. But aside from that, Magnetic pull makes him kind of consistent. His alter ego support, putting something back in. Even more than that, his alter ego ability itself, his survivor response, putting in the top three cards of your discard pile back in your deck, that's going to make what you find in your next couple of hands really consistent. So, you know, 2-2-2 two, two, two stat line as well. I do think he's going to be pretty reliable. And, you know, I can't imagine, you know, a really good Magneto game and a really bad Magneto game being far apart. I think he's going to be at a consistent level. Card value, I put it free. None of these cards are mind blowing. Most of them are just okay. And I think the best thing really is the ability on his hero card, you know, that magnetic pull. Everything else is just striking me as very good, very solid, very usable. But I'm not, you know, absolutely crazy about the value. So that's kind of where I stand there. So it's fine. And I think the resource generators and X Men trait and thing, he's going to be a strong hero. No problems there. Look at all these stars I've predicted him with. Although, you know, a lot of this is guesswork. So again, big pinch of salt, many pinches of salt. Uh, but that's kind of where I stand on that. Ease of play. I do think he's going to be quite easy to play. Would I give him to a new player for their first time playing? Probably not. But I also don't think it would go terribly based on what I've seen so far. I think it would be fine. Three or four games under their belt. I, I think Magneto is a great character for people based on what I've seen so far. The variety is what's hit me. And... I don't know whether to put this at, you know, one star or five star in all honesty. I'm guessing two star right now. Nothing stands out as being really good for him to use. But nothing stands out as being really bad for him to use. This means that if you really like playing Magneto and want to play him, you can probably play him in loads of different ways and not feel like you're missing out. On the other hand, if you play a big mix of different heroes and you like interesting builds which really synergize and do interesting things, I'm going to be looking at Magneto and thinking, because this is kind of how I play, what can I do on him that I couldn't do better on another character? Even with the discarding stuff, we have Domino, who I think does do it better and slightly more interesting. So I don't know what his unique selling point is, so to speak, aside from the fact he's a freaking Magneto, which is pretty awesome. But like I say, lots of missing cards. I think this could change. And maybe there'll be cards which synergize more of this carding, more of magnetic stuff, maybe somehow. I don't know. So... Again, this is just a prediction, but right now I don't feel a ton of variety for him from my perspective, but it is what it is. I feel the same way about Captain Marvel. A lot of people see Captain Marvel as someone you can do anything with and all sorts of things with. I see her as kind of a blank canvas, which I could do anything with, but I also could just do that elsewhere with more interactions for that thing. So hopefully that makes sense. Fun factor, I don't like to rate before playing them. I do think he looks fun. He looks pretty solid. I think the discarding for a magnetic card it's going to be a thrill. It's kind of that gamble. Oh, what am I going to get here? What am I going to discard? You know, what is my armor going to power up? It's kind of the domino effect. I think people like that. So I think he will be maybe more fun on average. But the variety kind of factor might bring that down slightly. But again, we've seen so few of his hero cards. 
this might not make sense in a few months when he's finally released in November. But yeah, so overall, I have to try and rate him based on this. He has a lot of stars here. A downside I haven't really mentioned is that by discarding a lot, he is going to be seeing maybe more encounter cards than the average character from decking out. But at the same time, if you're flipping Ultra Ego, and especially if you're using his Ultra Ego support, you can put a fair chunk of cards back into his deck, which is going to slow that down. And, you know, so don't quite know how that's going to work out yet in full practice. Overall, though, thinking about all these things, I'm going to very tentatively guess he's going to be a top 25 hero. Now, I don't necessarily think he's going to be a top 20 hero. The top 20 nowadays, after the X-Men and X-Force wave, along with, you know, some really powerful Avengers, you know, we've got Venom, we've got, you know, all the most of the Web Warriors as well. Uh, there are so many really, really powerful characters. I think the top 20 characters in the game, and there's like 52, I guess at this point, there'd be like, what, 55 characters? It's going to be hyper, hyper competitive to get into that top 20. Top 25, I think is feasible. Maybe he'd be top 30. I don't think any worse than that. And I say worse lightly, even, you know, being, you know, the 30th place out of 55 in Marvel Champions, that's really good because these are superheroes who are all very, very strong. And I'll be honest with you, with all the new X-Men support we're seeing as well, I mean, all the X-Men are probably moving up even more than I've already moved them up in you know, my personal list I kind of use and reference sometimes. Uh, I need to update that. We need an updated tier list at some point. There's just so many videos I want to make. Um, so, you know, it's hard for me to see him not being top 25 in all honesty because of that. But yeah, I don't think he stands out more than a lot of the most powerful mutants we have. But we'll see. So many cards missing. He could end up being, you know, a top 10 character for all I know. Because over half of his cards are missing from what I'm judging. But definitely going to be very strong, very capable, very viable on expert or whatever difficulty and villains you like. He'll do just fine. And he actually might match up really well with some of the tougher villains like Ronan because they have healthy minions, which you won't waste damage when you're using your um, magnetic shards, uh, metal shards attack. And then you get the tough, which is obviously really good against those heavy damage hits. So yeah, pretty interesting. We'll see how it all shakes out. I like Magneto. I'm not super intrigued by his abilities, if I'm honest. You know, like I say, having done the deep dive, having looked through basically every aspect card in the game and trying to you know, make these builds work and things, you know, I'm not saying I haven't missed something. I probably missed a couple of interesting things, maybe, but nothing's coming together very easily. Of all the reviews of all the heroes I've done on this channel, yeah, I'm just saying Magneto just looks really vanilla right now. You know, there's, there's a reason maybe his card backing art, you know, color is white. Um, but I hope we get some really cool stuff in his unrevealed cards. Uh, I'm kind of going in circles now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. Like, comment, subscribe. We've got links below. Into the AM is kind of a partner, the really cool clothing brand. If you've not checked it out before, check them out. Have a look. See if it interests you. Got a discount code for that 10% off. If you want to join the Discord, if you want to get involved in the conversation, links for that there too. All the cool stuff. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you have a great day. I hope you're excited for Magneto, excited for Jubilee, who's about to release, excited for Nightcrawler in the future. I'm loving the X-Men stuff. Do I wish it was released a little bit faster? Yeah, but it is what it is. Thanks, guys. Maybe we'll find Beast in a future wave, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.